Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the most widely used HTML elements. The first one we'll be talking about is the paragraph. Paragraphs are the most rudimentary element of a text document. They usually are represented in visual media as blocks of text separated from adjacent blocks by blank lines and or first line indentation. But HTML paragraphs can be any structural grouping of related content such as images or even form fields. Visual browsers nearly always display paragraphs on a new line with a bit of space between them by default. Paragraphs may contain text, images, and other inline elements. These are called phrasing content, but they may not contain headings, lists, section elements, or any elements that typically display as blocks by default. As of HTML5, it's technically okay to admit the closing paragraph tag because it's not required in order for the document to be valid. The browser will just assume it is closed when it encounters the next block element. But many web developers, including myself, prefer to close paragraphs and all elements for the sake of consistency and clarity. I recommend that if you're going to follow good practice and ultimately be a good and conscientious developer, you are always tidy with your markup and you close all block level elements. Ultimately, the purpose of a paragraph element is to separate a part of the text. This way you can make it more readable and more organized. The H1 to H6 HTML elements represent six levels of section headings. H1 is the highest section level, and H6 is the lowest. They are considered content sectioning elements since they allow you to organize the document content into logical pieces. Heading information can be used by user agents to construct a table of contents for the document automatically. You should avoid using heading elements to resize text. Instead, you'll ultimately want to use CSS to do that. You should avoid skipping heading levels. Always start from an H1, followed by an H2, and so on. A common navigation technique for users of screen reading software is jumping from heading to heading to quickly determine the content on the page. Because of this, it is important to not skip one or more heading levels. Doing so may create confusion as the person navigating this way may be wondering where the missing heading is. It is recommended that you only use one H1 per page or section. It should consciously describe the overall purpose of the content. The reason we want to limit ourselves to the number of H1s is it's beneficial for screen readers. As you can see, all of the headings that I've created are going to be bold. They're all block level elements and they will show in descending size. This is how the browser renders the headings by default. I have mentioned that it is possible to change the styling of any element, but that's something that we'll wait to do until we learn some CSS. The HR element represents a thematic break between paragraph level elements. For example, if you have a change of scene in a story or a shift of topic within a section, you may want to separate the areas with a horizontal rule. Historically, the HR element has been presented as a horizontal rule or line. This element is now defined in semantic terms rather than presentational terms. So if you wish to draw a horizontal line, you should be using the appropriate CSS. The HR tag should be reserved for actually creating a thematic break within your content. Now, ultimately, we should be using CSS for the presentation or the design of our page. But many HTML elements do have attributes that allow you to change certain visual aspects of the element. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to some of those things now so that you can practice using them and incorporate them into what we're building right now without any CSS. It is worth mentioning that the things that I'm showing you now aren't necessarily best practice because as soon as we learn CSS, all of this sort of styling will be rolled into our CSS. So just keep that in mind and know that we will learn a better way to do this in the future. 
I'm going to go ahead and create a, another horizontal rule between my paragraph and my list of headings. What I want to do here is I want to change some of the properties about the horizontal rule. So we're going to do that by adding several attributes. Remember, attributes go inside of the opening tag. Since the horizontal rule is an empty tag, we only have the one tag element. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the color. So I write the attribute color, then I put equal, and then I'm going to add my quotation marks. And inside the quotation marks, I'll add the attribute value. We'll just use the keyword of teal. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the size. Size is the same as specifying height. So let's just go ahead and put 6px for 6 pixels. This is ultimately going to make our horizontal rule much thicker. I can also specify width. And you can see that my horizontal rule is now much smaller because I set the width to 200 pixels. In addition to putting a pixel value, we could also use a percent based value. So if I change this to 50%, the width of the horizontal rule is going to grow or shrink depending on the width of the browser window. We can set the alignment of our horizontal rule. So I'm going to go ahead and specify that B on the left. And as you can see, we've added a series of attribute and value pairs to our HR tag, and we've reformatted the way the HR tag looks. Now, as I've mentioned, this is not necessarily best practice, but since we don't know any CSS, this is how we're going to have to make these changes on our page currently. Now, if you try to use some of these attributes on some of the other elements, you'll find that they don't work. These are examples of some of the attributes that are defined for specific elements only. Next up, we'll look at how we can create some lists.